Hi everybody, this is Max with Light Automotive. Today we got this 2013 Fiat 500 Turbo. This is an awesome little car we got here. And we're going to change the factory headlights, which are a 9012 halogen. It's a, an HIR bulb, which is kind of a new halogen technology, but it still sucks. So we're gonna put in our Enlight Xenon HID system into this vehicle. So before we get started, let's just take a look at the HID kit that we're going to be putting into this vehicle. Now, this is going to be applicable to all Fiat 500 models, um, the, the base model and also the turbo and also the Abarth as well. Um, so what we got here is we got two of the Enlight Alpha 35 series ballasts. These are really high quality, very nice uh, ballast component. They feature rapid start technology, so the bulbs will heat up and warm up much faster these will reach their full, they, they will reach 75% brightness in about two seconds. So this is comparable to OEM systems in terms of how fast they start up. They're also extremely reliable. The whole kit has a two year warranty. Um, so moving on, this is our second generation Arc Series bulbs. These are a very nice HID bulb. They're a little different than other things in the market. They have a, uh, let's take this out here. Don't touch the bulbs with your fingers like I just did, that was an accident, so I'll have to clean this bulb up. But you can see that there's an actual little bubble or a curve in the glass chamber there, in the glass tube. Now what that does is it prevents the light rays that are coming from the, uh, the arc itself from refracting. If you have a straight piece of glass, they, they refract uh, as they exit the glass. And this, this, bu this little bubble that's in there, this helps keep the light rays traveling in the right direction. Um, but again, this is our second generation ARC series bulb. They're about 20% brighter than the previous generation. Uh, so these will, this entire kit here will be about 3000 lumens per bulb, which is very nice. And that's 3000 lumens in 6000 K. There's a lot of other companies out there will say that their systems are around 3000, uh, I'm sorry, 3000 lumens, but that's in a 4300 K bulb. It's very rare to find a system that is 3000 lumens in a 6000 K bulb. So it's gonna be a nice crystal white color. So in addition to these components here, we also have our Alpha Series Relay Harness. We'll get more into that later. Again, a very high quality piece, fully waterproof. It's got nice thick wires. Um, and also you're gonna get some zip ties and mounting brackets and bolts to mount the ballast. Now to start off with, there's a little red lever on the driver's side of the vehicle. You wanna pull that inside the car. And then here on the outside, just to the left of this little uh, ridge here in the hood, there is a lever that you're gonna push over uh, towards the center and then lift up and everything will come out just like that and uh, here on this side of the vehicle grab the the hood latch stick it into this slot that's right here and open the hood and the installation will begin from here now to start off we're gonna go to the back of the headlight here so we can start off on the driver's side and here you can see that there is a dust cap on the back of the headlight housing. So in order to ask to access the factory bulb, you have to first get a hold of this stick. You can use your left hand to do this. And then twist this cap counterclockwise, just like you're loosening a screw. It might take some force, but you see from there, it comes out just like that. Now for this particular vehicle, I actually don't have the stock bulbs. Uh, what I'm doing here is taking out a really old HID system and putting in one of our light systems. Uh, but I can show you how the factory bulb will come out. So the factory bulb is gonna look very similar to this, not identical to this particular bulb, but um, the bulb is going to be in, that, in the cavity in, in the bulb socket. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna rotate the bulb counterclockwise. So you're gonna twist it to the left like that and then you should be able to pull it straight out. Now, there's gonna be a connector on the back of the bulb, which is this guy here, this is the exact connector. And in order to separate the bulb from the connector, you see this gray tab where my thumb is, what you're gonna do is you're gonna lift up gently on this tab just a, just a little bit, and then separate the bulb from this connector. And then later on, that's where we're gonna put the HID bulb. Here on the passenger side of the vehicle, this is a US spec car, so this is the passenger side here now. Uh, same deal, except for this side is a little bit more of a pain in the butt because there is a, uh, there's just more stuff here. The coolant overflow, over, overflow tank is there and it makes the space a little tighter. But again, you just wanna get your hands in there and then twist, 
twist this headlight cap counterclockwise until you hear it pop out like that and then just wiggle it out the same way you did the other one and you can see maybe from here what you would do is you would turn the factory bulb counterclockwise and then pull it out and separate the gray connector from the back of the bulb the same way that we did on the other side. Now at this time you're going to need a drill along with a either a stepper bit which is what you see here. It's basically a drill bit that's got uh, a big taper on it so you can you can drill different size diameter holes or you can just get um, a spade bit or something but Effectively what you need to do is you need to drill a one inch diameter hole or a 25 millimeter diameter hole in the center of each headlight cap. So here you can see I've already drilled the hole in the back of each headlight cap. And you just want to drill the hole big enough, just, just big enough, so that you can slide this connector through and that works out to be about a 25 millimeter diameter hole. And then what we'll do is we'll feed the bulb harness through and then uh, you see there's a slot in this rubber grommet here, the silicone grommet, and that will fit snugly in between the wall thickness of this headlight cap. So I'm gonna feed this one of the bulb harnesses through. Actually, I'll do both of them and show you what it looks like when it's done. Here you can see that I fed the bulb harness through each of the headlight caps, and this is what it should look like when you're done. Now you gotta make sure that you get the direction of this right. So this is the outside of the headlight cap, uh, or the one that faces the engine bay, if you will. And this is the side that faces the inside of the headlight housing. And you want the bulb, obviously, to be inside the headlight housing so it can connect to the socket. Now this connector here, this will plug into the gray connector uh, that went into the factory bulb. And effectively what we're doing is we're taking the power from inside the headlight socket to outside the headlight socket where, where it will then connect to the ballasts, which are what these two blue connectors are for here, and, uh, and the relay harness. So same thing on both sides. And you have one side of the rubber grommet or of the silicone grommet on the outside and the other side or the, the other flap is on the inside, just like that. So now is the time to remove the protective cover of the bulb, just slide it off, and then also take off the foam piece, which is where my finger would be. And if you do end up accidentally touching the glass capsule, make sure that you wipe it down very thoroughly and gently uh, with uh, isopropyl alcohol or rubbing, rubbing alcohol. Don't leave any fingerprints on there, don't leave any dirt or oil on there, or that will drastically shorten the lifetime of the bulb, just like a halogen bulb. So now what you gotta do is carefully feed the glass capsule into the opening for the headlight socket there. And there's three tabs on the bulb, one, two, three, and you get, get those to line up just right so you can tighten the bulb into the socket. Now since there's not a lot of space on this vehicle, what you wanna do is just take the uh, headlight cap and just gently slide it down into this little pocket over here and then carefully, hopefully you can kinda of see that, carefully slip the bulb in there and then you want to rotate you want to rotate the bulb until you just get it until you get it lined up with the three prongs in there and then turn it clockwise to lock it in place the next step is to take this black connector here that's got the uh, the silver and red wire coming out of it um, it may be a different color on the actual bulbs that you have but um, the next step is to take this black connector and again this is the one that is on the the inside of the headlight cap so you can see this is coming through the headlight cap onto the inside and connect that to the factory gray connector. And again, this sends power um, when the headlights are switched on to the outside of the headlight cap. And then once you get here, you can just nicely tuck away these cables inside the headlight housing and then line up the headlight housing, or I should say line up the headlight cap with, with the housing and you might have to, you gotta rotate it and get it just right so that uh, you get the, uh, the tabs, there you go. Once you get the tabs lined up, turn it clockwise to tighten it. This is the opposite way that uh, you, you took it off. And there you go, that's it. It should look just like this when it's done. Over here on the passenger side, in order to make this side a little bit easier to put the bulb in, I would take this 
this hose that is connected to the top of the coolant reservoir tank and just push it down if you can get it just right you can tuck it you can tuck it away underneath underneath the headlight housing just enough to give you enough clearance here now obviously there's a kink there so we're not going to leave it like that but this is just temporary in order to give us some extra room to slip the bulb in there now just as with the other side you know we got this the headlight cap kind of tucked in already and then just gently guide gently guide the bulb into into the socket opening and then you have to twist the bulb so you get the three tabs or the three prongs to line up properly might be a little tedious And once you can get it, hopefully you can kind of see that there, it sits in and then you want to twist it counterclockwise just like that. Now, just one more thing to note, when the bulb is actually lock in, locked into place, the, uh, the orientation of this back piece here should be vertical. So you see that's kind of an oval and you want to make sure that the oval is uh, facing up and down or towards the floor and, and into the sky. That's how you know that it's in the correct orientation. You can also see that it says 9012 and that's also in the vertical orientation. Now the passenger side is going to be different. We're actually not going to use this connection here. So you're going to take the, uh, somewhere in here, take the gray connector and just leave it as it is. We're not going to use this. Once we put the relay harness in, the relay harness in, you'll understand why. But just tuck this away and also tuck away this black plastic uh, connector also into the headlight housing. Just tuck it in there and then take your headlight cap, which could take a little work and a little monkeying around, but take your headlight cap and then oh, put it back into, into position. So once you get the tabs lined up, you should see that you can you can push this in a little bit. Just like that, that's how you know you got the tabs lined up. And then, while, while putting some pressure on it, twist it clockwise, just like that, to lock it in place. And then you're done. Now the next step is to prepare the ballast and the brackets. So the kit will come with uh, two of these mounting brackets, and it'll come with four bolts and some washers. Uh, the ballast will also come pre-tapped so that the, uh, the thread and pitch in these holes lines up with those bolts there. Now. In order to do this, you want to flip the ballast upside down like this and just mount. For this particular ballast, I'm going to mount the bracket on just like that. Slip on. Slip on a washer and then take the bolt and then thread the bolt in to the hole just like that. And do the same thing for this guy and then also mount the brackets onto the back of that ballast. So here you can see I've got both of these mounted here and what I've done is I've done them inversely from each other so you're gonna want to line up one with the bracket on the on the right hand side of the ballast and then the other one with the bracket on the left hand side of the ballast and these will correspond to the uh, the driver and passenger side of the vehicle. The most convenient mounting location for the ballast that I've found so far uh, is gonna be right here right in this right in the back of the headlight uh, there's a nice pocket there and what we're gonna do is we're gonna bend this bracket here we're gonna, we're gonna bend it to about 90 degrees or maybe a little bit more than 90 degrees and we're gonna mount it to these two bolts here or you can just use one bolt if you want so I'm gonna do that uh, you're gonna need a 14 millimeter socket to loosen these guys up um, and I will mount them and show you what it looks like here you can see that I've bent this bracket a little bit more than 90 degrees. You can just use your hands to do this or you can use the pliers or something. It's not, it's not very difficult. Uh, took these two guys off. You get, these line up perfectly with the slots that are in here. Tighten it back down and then you've got your ballast mounted right there. Now same thing on the passenger side of the vehicle. Again I just bent this bracket over and here I've added just a, a slight angle this way. Um, it just helps with the clearance and then it still allows you access to this AC line here. And from here what we'll do is we'll install the relay harness and make all the wiring connections. Just for kicks I wanted to show you guys the old relay harness that I took out of this vehicle. Um, 
this is this is such an outdated system here you can see that the the fuse holder is not waterproof so you can get a bunch of corrosion in there it's got it's got thin power wires it's got thin ground wires I mean look at this relay pack how old school is that you can see that there's rust forming on the bottom of it from there being corrosion on the connectors there's no silicone seals here or anything like that um, so the Alpha Series relay harness really is a step step up from a lot of the traditional relay har harnesses that are available on the market today. Now onto the wiring harness. This scares some people just because it looks like there's a lot of wires and a lot of stuff going on. It's really not that difficult so don't worry about it. We'll go over all the connections and uh, we'll make it easy. So let's start off with uh, the battery connections. So from the relay pack, which is this guy here, what you're going to find is that there's two cables coming out of it. One that looks like this. You'll see that there's two ground wires that go to a ring terminal. This will connect to the negative terminal of the battery. And also you'll see that there's a nice waterproof fuse, fuse holder here on this red cable. And this will connect to the positive side of the battery. Now what that does is it allows electricity or current to be drawn directly from the battery instead of through the vehicle's uh, factory headlight socket. And again, this relay pack is nice. It's a heavy duty relay, 40 amp relay. It's got uh, nice silicone water seals here. So waterproof, all the good stuff. So moving on from there, this connector, this is the trigger for the relay. All the relay is is basically a, it's a fancy switch. So this will plug into the vehicle's factory headlight socket. So if you remember that gray plug, um, that we that we were dealing with earlier that plugged into the factory headlight bulb um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna plug the HID bulb harness into this guy so when you're inside the car and you turn the switch on what it does is it sends uh, a signal to here turns the relay on and the relay says oh the lights are on let's take power from the battery and send it out to the ballast which are what these connectors are for these connectors here with the, with the yellow seals connect into the input of the ballast. And so that's all on one side. And then there's this long cable here. This stretches over to the opposite side of the vehicle, which is in this case is the passenger side. And um, this will plug into the other ballast on the passenger side of the vehicle. Now, in addition to this, you'll see that there's another ring terminal. This guy right here. This is an additional secondary ground. It's uh, it really helps the performance and lifetime of the ballast, so you, you need to use both that ground and the battery ground. So that's it, we'll go put it in the vehicle. Here we are at the battery. Just uh, take this cap off, it's really easy, just slide up. Set that aside for now. You're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket to take off the, uh, the nuts that are on this, the center studs. So we're gonna use this stud here and this stud here and use a 10 millimeter socket to take the nuts off of that. Now there's no one perfect way to do this, but I'll show you how I routed the cables here. Here's the positive terminal of the battery. Um, you can see that I've routed the wire behind this, uh, this factory harness connector here, which I believe is the ECU. I routed it behind here, it's a little hard to see. And then also routed the ground, the ground cable just uh, behind this other ground wire here. And now, if your vehicle doesn't have an extra nut on this, on this battery bracket here, you can actually use one of the spare nuts that will come with the kit. So that fits on there perfectly. Slide the ring terminal onto the stud and then put the nut on and tighten it down. And then uh, make sure you take your 10 millimeter socket and then snug that down accordingly. And same thing on the opposite side here. This one should have a, a factory nut and washer with it, but if it doesn't, then you can just use one of the ones that, came, that comes with the kit. Sorry for the dirty hands. Usually I have gloves, but I, I ran out this time. So just like that. And then take your 10 millimeter socket or 10 millimeter wrench and then tighten both of those bolts down. And once you've got these tightened, take your uh, positive terminal connector, or I'm sorry, cover, and then just line that up with the holes that are there, put that back into place. Here on the driver's side of the vehicle, let's revisit some of the connections that we have coming out on the back side of the bulb. So now is a good time to take these two blue connectors right here and then plug them in to the ballast. So you can see that this cable here, here's the igniter. 
and on the other side we've got these two connectors here. So these guys only go in one way. So connect these black connectors to the blue ones that are coming out the back of the bulb. Once you've got that done it should look just like that. Now the next step is to come back to the, uh, the relay harness here and now find find this guy. And what you want to do is you want to take this connector here and find this braided harness coming off the back of the bulb and connect these two together. You can see that there's a little locking tab there. Line up that locking tab with this side of the other connector. Once you've got that connected, it should look just like that. And then come back to the relay harness here and now find now find the other cable which uh, looks like this. It's got that yellow silicone seal on it. And what we're going to do is take this one and plug it into the input of the ballast. So the ballast has got two primary cables coming out of it. One of them we just connected, which is where my finger are, those two blue connectors. And the other one looks just like this. So you're going to take this guy and plug it into the input of the ballast. Once the connection is made, it should look like this. And that's all the connections on the driver's side of the vehicle. Let's move over to the passenger side. Now this part might be a little bit tricky, but uh, makes for a nice clean install. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the long end, or the long cable coming out of the relay harness, and we're going to feed it through this radiator core support bracket here. And the way to do that is to take the cable, well first, oops, find the other end of the cable here. Uh, there we go. And you're going to locate this opening over here. You can see I can put my fingers down there. And what you're going to do is you're just going to feed this end of the harness through that opening. And then there's a, there's a hole here. You should be able to see it. And you're going to keep feeding it, feeding it, feed, feed it through all the way until you get to the, uh, where the hood latch is. Here you can see that uh, I fed this end of the cable through the radiator core support over to the location where the hood latch is. Once you, just, once you get here, just uh, continue to pull it through. Get the ground wire in. And you probably have to work from both sides just to, just to feed it through. Push it more and come over here and pull it. Now once you get a little bit more going on here, what you're going to want to do is, this is a little hard to see, um, you're going to want to tuck this guy underneath the, the hood latch, just like that and then you can continue to, to feed it through. And then, oh, come on. Take the other end of the connector, and then, uh, well, I'll just, you're gonna continue to move it through here, all the way out to the other side. And you can see that there's another opening here where I took my finger around. And you just wanna feed it through. and continue moving it towards the other side. And actually, another tool is, there are these holes here. I'll oh, watch, you probably can't even see it now. There you go. Uh, there's these holes there where you can stick your finger in and you can, you can also help guide it along. Now the reason why I choose to do it this way is because this is a very compact engine bay. Uh, you can see that there's the turbo manifold right there. And you really don't want to, um, uh, run wires over this. You want to make sure that it's tucked away, well away from the turbocharger and the exhaust side of the vehicle. You may be able to do the inverse of the installation and uh, run it along the back side, but I like the way, I like doing it this way. It's just a nice clean install to do it this way. Once you get it fed through, you can see that uh, this cable will exit. will exit kind of over here. There's a little, there's a little pocket or opening where the cable can be fed through. And again, you can use these holes that are there. Well, oh, maybe you can't see it. There you go. You can see that the cable is in there. And you can use that uh, to put your fingers in to, or to put a flathead screwdriver in and help push the harness over to this side of the vehicle over here. So now we can continue to make the same type of connections that we made on the opposite or on the driver's side of the vehicle. Again, what you're going to want to do is take the black wires that are coming out of the ballast and then connect them to the blue uh, connectors here that are coming out of the back side of the bulb. And 
Also, this is the the input to the ba the ballast. Again, take the connector that we just fed through to the passenger side of the vehicle. I probably can't do this with one hand, but there we go. Connect that in just like that. Um, one thing to make to make note of: there is a uh, maybe there's a plus and a minus on the input connector to the ballast, and that should correspond to the white for the plus and the black for the negative side on that. So make sure that if you flip this around, the ballast is not gonna turn, or, turn on. So you gotta make sure they have 12 volts positive going to the plus side of the, val the ballast and uh, the black wires on the negative side or else it won't turn on. And that's all the connections that we need to make for this side. Now, this connector here is not used. All you need to do, you can just uh, zip tie this away or cover it up with electrical tape or something like that. But uh, this is a good point to take the ring terminal, again, you can see that there's two black wires coming out of the back side of the connector, and this goes to a ring terminal, and now you need, you need to connect this to a chassis, a chassis ground. And the ground that we'll, go, that we'll use for this uh, is this bolt right here. You can see that there's a bracket here, and you can use either one of these bolts as a ground. Now. Uh, it doesn't look like the greatest ground, but I did check this with a multimeter just to make sure that you get a good solid ground there. And this metal bolt here is going to a chassis ground, so you can use that bolt. You're going to need a 10 millimeter socket to take that out. Now that we've got all the connections made, again you can see that uh, I've put that chassis ground right there. Tighten it back up. Here, now, is, now is the time to test the lights. Yes, it looks everything looks really messy, but we want to leave it just like that to make sure that all the connections are correct. So now what we can do is we can go inside the go inside the vehicle, turn the lights on, and let's see how it looks. Now just remember that you do have to put the key into the ignition and turn it into the on position. Before you can turn the lights on, if you just uh, flip the switch here without the key in the ignition, it will not turn on. Once you've tested the HID system and verified that both sides are working properly, now it's cleanup time. What you want to do is tuck away all the wires so that uh, they're not flopping around and, then, and that they're not contacting any moving parts or anything like that. And then also what I've done is I've mounted the relay pack to the actual ballast. Um, this doesn't require an additional bolt, I'll just make sure to include an additional bolt with the kits for this particular vehicle. And this is kind of convenient, you can see that you can just mount the, uh, the tab for the Relay uh, for the relay pack directly to the ballast using one of the supplied tapped holes. That is, if you decide to install it in this particular manner. And uh, you can also use some of the supplied zip ties to to mount and secure any of the wires. Like you can see, I've used a zip tie here to secure to one of the factory harnesses. Um, also, you'll see that I've tucked this cable on the inside of the windshield wiper fluid tank. And just make sure that nothing's flopping around um, or, or can come loose. And once, you're, once you've got to this point, you're done. That's it. You can close the hood and then in, let's enjoy the new lights. Now one of the nice things about the factory Fiat projectors is they're both low and high beam in the same bulb. So what you're looking at right now is the headlights in low beam function, but you'll also get high beams. We swap over to our HID system uh, because you, because the factory projector is both low and high beams. You get both HID low beams and HID high beams, and this will greatly improve your nighttime visibility, especially if you're driving out in the woods or something where there's uh, where there's no street lights. So this is another thing to test just to make sure everything works works nice. And there you go.
So it looks great. It's a perfect fit for this white Fiat. If you're interested in purchasing this kit, you can visit www.enlightauto.com. Go to the Browse by Vehicle section, click on Fiat, and then find the Fiat 500 or your appropriate Fiat model. Thanks for watching.